Howdy and welcome back. Let's get started on our discussion on type conversions. So our focus today is going to be on two different types. They're kind of going in different directions. We'll first uh, begin our discussion with narrowing conversions. A narrowing conversion is going to convert a value to a type that cannot store even approximations of all of the values of the original type. Here's why we're saying all of the values. Let's go back to the coin example from the objects, types, and values lesson. Let's say that we have a large, larger box that can store coins of all denominations, and then we have a smaller box that can only store, let's say, a dime. We could take a dime and we could store it in the larger box. And if we wanted to move that value into the smaller box, it would fit. We'd have no problem. However, that larger box can also store quarters. If we attempted to take the quarter and store it into the dime box, it would not fit. And we might have some surprises because it, you know, previously we saw that, okay, we can go from this you know, items or values stored in this larger box into the smaller box with no problem. This is where we get into this idea of all values. Um, so some you might be able to store with good approximation, others simply won't fit. And then we get some surprises. An example of this in the C++ language is going to be converting a double to a float. This is a narrowing conversion because a double is larger. It can hold a larger range of values uh, than the float, meaning that some values stored in the float, if we look at this range here, or stored in the double rather, would obviously fit within the uh, float, uh, bearing aside any sort of precision errors. However, there are obviously values uh, that could be stored in the double that they just won't fit into that smaller float. And this is kind of thinking about uh, back to that box example. There's some values in here that are the quarter that you just can't get into the, to the float. There are also some values in the double that are similar to the dime that you can get into that smaller package. So a narrowing conversion is simply saying that we cannot store even approximations of all of the values of the type. Some we can, but there are also a large number that we cannot. At the other end, or going the other direction rather, is widening conversions. A widening conversion converts a value to a type that inc can include at least approximations of all values of the original type. So before we get into the example on this slide, let's just take the converse of what we were talking about with the narrowing conversion. Obviously, pretty much any value in a float could fit, in, fit well within the range of a double. Going from a float to a double, in this case, would be a widening conversion. Another example is going to be converting an int into a double. If we look at the range, and I'm setting aside precision right now, we'll get into that on the next slide, but if we just look at the range of an integer, we can obviously get at least an approximation of that value into this much larger double, and again, there is a reason why we're saying at least approximations, and we'll get to that here in a moment. So let's just do a brief comparison and contrast of uh, narrowing conversions against widening conversions. We're going to say that narrowing conversions are not always safe. And this goes back to that coin example. Sometimes the magnitude of the converted value is changed substantially in the process. In other words, if you attempt to put say a quarter into the dime box, you're not going to get the whole quarter. You're just going to get what kind of fit. And we'll see how that works uh, later on. But here's an example. Fit, fit instance, let's consider the double 1.5 times uh, 10 to the 25th, which will not fit into an integer. Instead, this is going to result, if we were to look at the value after we attempt this, that's stored in the integer, it's not going to be any in any way, shape, or well, way, shape, or form related to the original double that we tried to stuff within it. Now, on the other hand, widening conversions are nearly always safe, meaning that the approximate magnitude of the converted value will be maintained. So let's consider this, and hopefully it will highlight why we keep saying approximate magnitude, approximate uh, you know, value. So let's say we want to convert an integer into a float. This is a widening conversion, but some precision may be lost. And the question is why? Well, let's assume that both this integer and float are the same size. Both are, let's say, 32 bits. What this means for the integer is that we're allowed 10 decimal digits of precision to store some sort of value. However, 
a float of the same size must have its sequence of bits partitioned into three fields, a sign bit, an exponent bit, and then a mantissa. Each of these fields is necessary to store the floating point value in normalized exponential form. What this means is that we're having a smaller number of bits uh, devoted to the mantissa, which is responsible for the precision of the resulting floating point value. So when we go to convert that int into the float, if the int is a large enough value, some of the lower end uh, digits would be essentially dropped off uh, because we're unable to store a value within the float of the, with the same precision. But for smaller integer values that are you know about seven digits of precision, we won't have this issue.